Uh, speaking of Carter Brady, he is joining us right now. How's it going, man? How's it going, Kenny? I'm good, man. Thank you so much for being on the show this evening. And again, I apologize for the double booking situation, but I'm glad we were able to get you on. So we appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Not a problem. I'm happy to be on. This is, uh, this is my first official uh, call-in live interview, so this is awesome to be on here. Wow. This, this, that touched my heart right there. Like, anytime you could be the first at something, you know, that I, I'm, I'm going to um, be proud of that. So, I got bragging rights. I am the first to interview Carter Brady, so nobody else can make that claim. And if he gets big and blow up, then I was the first. I was there from the beginning. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, so, Carter, man, um, let's let's get into it, man. Um, how did you, how did you um, get started in music, man? How did it start off for you? Yeah, so uh, I actually I've been playing guitar since. Man, it's been a long time since uh, end of first grade. So I, you know, ever since first grade, I've just been, you know, my I'm I'm lucky to have you know a support system and my my family and my mom had gotten me into it. And you know, for for a few years, of course, you know, the, the first few years of kind of just, uh, you know, getting through the you know the years of practicing and and really kind of getting to know yourself as a musician. And um, yeah, I was uh, you know fortunate enough to get to play in a bunch of bands in high school and uh, grew up right outside New York city in the suburbs and was able to, you know, play in some fundraiser concerts, whether it was rock or uh, do little stuff with, uh, you know, jazz ensemble in high school. And, you know, I was, I've always been someone that's loved to organize and uh, get, get things together. And, uh, you know, one of the things I did was, you know, get some people around the community and form a few different bands. And one was more for original stuff and one was, for covers and just going out and playing and having fun. And, uh, yeah, from there, I kind of, uh, you know, I went to school and studied jazz guitar, but I've always growing up. I always grew up loving, you know, all kinds of rock music and, and any music in general. But I, um, one of the main bands I've always grew up loving is obviously the Beatles and, uh, Foo Fighters, Green Day. And just from there, it's kind of spawned into a lot of other genres that I've loved. And, um, yeah, just kind of from there, just kind of really trying to see what, what could happen. And, um, you know, I've just been, it's been awesome during the pandemic. Obviously there have been a lot of negatives, but a lot of positives for musicians, uh, you know, like myself and just being able to have more time on the, you know, to really work on things and, um, just kind of, yeah, just kind of push forward and see what happens. So, um, exactly where in New York are you from? So I'm actually from right outside New York City in uh, Pelham, New York, which is it's a small town right outside the Bronx. So it's uh, it's not too far from the city. Um, so, you know, I, growing up, I would, you know, sometimes go in with friends and kind of explore the city and stuff. And just, yeah, it was, it's a very small town, uh, but it's got a nice, tight, you know, very uh, – friendly feel and, and everyone in the town knows each other but it's uh it's one of those towns especially for music that i was fortunate for you know my guitar teacher growing up was uh you know very tuned in with the music community and was able to really put things together and uh you know early on was able to get up on stage and, and perform with his band and just kind of uh explore those different possibilities and you know yeah just kind of i've always been a huge uh, always have loved performing. And, and I think one of the reasons was just having the small community feel in Pelham and just, you know, yeah, just kind of exploring uh, myself as an artist and stuff. Awesome, man. So, you know, having a rep for a small city, man, it feels like, you know, you, you, you know, let me just get myself out there. Let me see what I can do. Um, obviously, you know, people talk New York City, you know, big city, big dreams and everything. Uh, but you coming from a small city and making a name for yourself and get some attention here and there. Um, you know, it's always good when someone from a small city that's really putting in the work and, you know, people are paying attention. 
and seeing, you know, one of their own, like really, really pursuing the dream. And, you know, you got to root for that, man. You, you have to. It's, it's, it's inspiring and it gives, you know, people out there, you know, some some hope. Like, you know what? If Carter Brady's doing this, I can do it too. So anyone from a small city, just keep striving. Just keep going. Um, you know, you know, just just be around good people and you know, just you know, be, you know, look around, see who's who's want to help. So Carter Brady, you're a prime example. Uh, just someone that's uh, that's just making a name for yourself and just doing good things and just you're talented, you're genuine, good dude, man. And you know, seeing how you put out your music, man, is amazing. Chasing vampires. Let me say something, man. When Jill told me I was going to interview you, and then I heard this song, Chasing Vampires, I lost my mind. It was just such an incredible song. Like, man, Jill knows, knows good talent. Like, she doesn't miss. Like, <laughs> when she finds <laughs> talent, and, and, and I hear the songs, I'm like, man... I see why Jill got you on Publicity Nation. You know, you are that talented. Chasing Vampires is such an incredible song. And I want to talk to you about this song. It came out in December of last year. And you did Correct. release a, a remix uh, recently of this particular song. So talk about putting this song together, man. How it came to be. Yeah, sure. Well, and first off, thanks so much. I, I really appreciate that, everything that you said. And, and um, you know, I'm just thankful that I was able to find Publicity Nation. And they've been awesome to work with. And, um, you, know, as you, you know, as you know, with Jill, she's got her own distribution company. She runs Heart, Song, Heart Songs Records. And, yeah. um, you know, have, they've been, they're super, you know, they're super top notch and know what they're doing. And they, you know, got me, got me an interview with you. They've gotten me. Uh, so much press and it's been amazing, but yeah, so I, uh, chasing vampires, uh, came together when, uh, late June, right after, you know, I had graduated school and I, I was uh, sort of in a flux with what I was going to do. And then the pandemic was sort of at the peak. And, um, you know, I was, I think I just came home one night from, I was at the beach with some friends and as, I think that's what I was doing and came home. Um, and you know, I just kind of sat down. I've got a, I do have a music room in my basement and, um, I was sort of messing around sometimes kind of pick up an acoustic and just see what, what, what I come up with. And, um, uh, you know, I'm being a primarily a guitar player. I've always focused things around a riff and, and seeing what comes of that. And, um, you know, w with this song, I sort of, I found this really cool riff and, and for guitar players out there, it's sort of like this uh octave with the bass on the the you know root note and i sort of was working it around that and and from there i sort of just paired the lyrics together and uh what's what's kind of funny i i i sometimes tell people this but it sounds kind of cheesy but i'm a huge star wars fan and one of the things that um for this song that was kind of funny is i was watching some star wars episode and um it was about two lovers that couldn't be together and, and star Wars, they're, you know, uh, Jedi can't marry and stuff. And, and it gave me an idea from that, which is kind of weird, but it gave me an idea to write a song about two lovers who couldn't, who can't be together. And someone is in the middle trying to work things out. So that's why it's, you know, the lyrics are women need a man who's figured it out. And that's sort of that third person, mysterious person that kind of goes in there. And, and again, I, uh, I, I, I'm still getting better at lyrics, but I, I think that uh, it was sort of one of those things that came together where uh, it was the right progression. It was the right uh, melody that I came up with uh, separately and bringing them all together, you know, was awesome. And, and I'm someone that, uh, you know, doing a lot of it by myself other than the drums. Um, and I'll get to who plays the bass, which I think is really cool. I, uh, I actually got Mark White from Spin Doctors to play bass on it. Mm. Uh, and that sort of happened through uh, him following me back in November. And I just kind of thought, you know, I looked up to those guys all my life and obviously love the song Two Princes, but 
uh, more than that, the band and, and just for him to follow me, I was like, you know, why not reach out to them? So I figured it'd be really cool just to kind of see what happens. And uh, sure enough, Mark replied and we sort of started a convo and dialogue from there and uh, sent him this, a rough mix of the song. I was like, hey, was one would love you to play on the song. And, uh, you know, he's out, you know, out west. But uh, he was like, you know, yeah, man, send me what you got. And I was like, cool. So, you know, we, we sent stuff back and forth. And I had my longtime friend from town play drums on it. And uh, before those two played on it, um, you know, I put all the guitar parts and the bass together, um, do most of the recording in my basement. Um, and I'm someone who loves to overdub guitars and, and it's, it definitely has that popular sound, but I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm someone, as I mentioned, Foo Fighters, I love the heavier guitar sound. Yeah. And, um, I think I definitely achieved that with, uh, you know, a, a lot of the heavy guitar parts in the choruses and, um, you know, love love the whole art of recording and um that was just really fun to go through that process especially when i had the time and and you know there wasn't any pressure to get it done so it's actually i've said this before and a few other things but this is by far the most i've ever spent working on a song um in terms of the time and the energy and the money and just everything together and i think it really i do yeah i with confidence i think it definitely uh paid off and i'm uh, it's one of those songs like I, I definitely spent a lot of time being nitpicky about it and just making sure it was as good as it could be. And, um, you know, I think uh, I was just, you know, for myself and for, for people listening, I just wanted to make sure that it was something that I was proud to release because the first time I released it as as good as I, I, I thought it was, I think that um, I knew it could be better. And I, I uh, before I'd gotten Mark White on it, I was playing bass for it, but I think it just needed a little extra something to it. And, and he played an amazing bass line and it just really fleshed out the song nicely and um, everything about it. You know, I'm just so happy how it's been received and, and, you know, I'm so glad that you love it and just, yeah, it's just so awesome to share with people, you know, and um, just been really cool. And I, I think it's got a nice mix of uh, styles from, like I mentioned, Foo Fighters, but also, people like soccer mommy that I've really listened to a lot and gotten inspiration from snail mail, um, you know, goo goo dolls and sort of that nineties nostalgia and paired with the modern. And mm -hmm. I think it's been, uh, it's been awesome to, to really support it and share with people. So, um, chasing vampires, original version and the remix are both available on all digital music platforms. Go check it out. And um, you can check out Carter's website at carterbradymusic.com. That's carterbradymusic.com. You can check out all of his old and new music out there as well and see what's next for, for Carter. I definitely want to do another interview with you. Um, given the circumstances, you can't be in for long, so I'll let you go. But thank you so much, man. Great chatting with you. And... Um, Keep doing your thing, man. I definitely like what she's putting out right now, and I look forward to hearing more from you in the future, man. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, Kenny. Really, really appreciate you having me on. Look forward to talking to you soon.